There's one of the uh, numerous Sumi-E type uh, ink illustrations that uh, we've got to uh, Accidental Christ, uh, at least in the hardbound edition, by a wonderful artist from Japan called Julianne. And uh, I know we're probably not hearing me very well, so I'm going to plug in a better <clears throat> microphone. And I hope you, <clears throat> I hope you can hear that better. Does that sound any better? Do I have any comments? That, uh, am I even on? Well, I'm going to proceed as if everything is normal. We're at chapter two of The Woman at the Well. Uh, where we left Jesus off. Uh, him and his uh, uh, disciples, or at least the Galilean disciples, uh, were, were walking up to uh, uh, Jerusalem for, the, for a festival. And uh, Jesus was reminiscing about uh, his uh, visit over the years to uh, a Samaritan uh, uh, brothel, uh, which is more like a sacred brothel. Uh, and he decides to uh, take a little detour and uh, visit the, the site again. Uh, because he thinks it might be the last time he'll be able to uh, uh, enjoy that uh, before he becomes king. So, it starts off with an epigram from uh, uh, John chapter 4. And incidentally, uh, the dialogue in this particular very short chapter the dialogue is taken directly from uh, the Gospel of John. So every time we hear Jesus speak or, or the woman speak, uh, uh, it is taken directly from uh, the Aramaic translation of the, the book of John. Then he came into the Samaritan city called Sychar near the field which Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Now, jo Jacob's well was there, and Jesus was tired by the fatigue of the journey and sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour, and there came a woman from Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Give me water to drink. His disciples had entered the city to buy food for themselves. I'm going to take the phone off the hook. Here we go, chapter 2. I thirst. Will you give me a drink? Jesus hoped the protocol of Jacob's well had not changed and that these were still the proper words that would initiate the adventure. He did not recognize the woman. She was dressed in a colorful kirtle, similar to that worn by many Samaritan women. He worried for a moment that she might not be a rose of Astarte. She set her leather bucket on the lip of the well and gave him an appealing smile. He returned her smile and sighed with relief that he had not inadvertently offended a pious woman. She read his thoughts in his sigh, and this amused her. She tossed her head to the side and laughed politely. What a wonderful la laugh she has, Jesus thought. It put him per uh, instantly at ease. 
she raised both of her hands to her temples to toss her thick black hair behind her shoulders. In doing so, she assured herself that Jesus saw the characteristic tattoos that adorn the palms of Jacob's daughters. Jesus read her thoughts in this gesture, and they both shared a soft laugh. The lovemaking began as a dance of wits. Holding the skirt of her long kirtle in one hand, she gracefully moved toward Jesus until she stood directly in front of him. She was nearly as tall as he. Her breath smelled of cloves, her hair of roses. She lowered her gaze to his feet, then slowly raised her dark eyes, elevating, evaluating every aspect of his garments and stature. You are a Jew, she said with a bold tone of sarcastic admiration. Without losing eye contact, she reached back and retrieved her bucket and held it low against the front of her body. And I am a Samaritan woman. The leather was soaked dark and it squeaked and bled as she slowly stretched its mouth wide to receive the obligatory coin. How can you ask me for a drink? Jesus reached into his travel satchel and retrieved the treasury purse for the journey. It bulged with over 200 pieces of silver. Is it not written that salvation is from the Jews? He said as he dropped the ponderous bag into her bucket. So surprising, surprisingly heavy was her payment that the bucket slipped from her hands and crashed to her feet. She did not have to look down. She knew from the sound and weight of the coins that she had just become a wealthy woman. For a moment, she broke character. She glared at Jesus, first in shock, dis disbelief, and then with profound gratitude. This was not what he wanted. It was spoiling the mood. He hoped that they could return to their game. He cleared his voice with an affected and affected a mock accent of pious pomposity. If you only knew the gift of God, and who is the man who said to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. He worried for a moment that these words were too vulgar for this early stage of the contest. He soon learned his fears were unfounded. His opponent's gratitude now transformed into determination to earn her riches. She touched his lips with the tip of her fingers. Jesus gently took her hand and moved it near his nose. It glistened with oil and smelled of mint and the sweet musk of woman. He closed his eyes and drank in her fragrance with a slow inhalation. She moved closer and placed the palm of her hand cautiously between his legs. She rubbed him gently through his robe, but soon discovered that he had not yet begun to respond to her touch. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? She did not remove her hand. Instead, she gently probed through his garment and expertly squeezed the sleeping treasure. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds? 
Jesus closed his eyes and encircled her with his arms. He was on the verge of losing the contest of innuendos. Without opening his eyes, he returned the cliché. Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoso drinks of the water which I shall give shall never thirst. Indeed, sir. This response amused her. She giggled and dropped her head forward and allowed her hair to brush his face and neck. She renewed her efforts with more enthusiasm, and now he grew swiftly in her hand. Soon she felt empowered to lift his robe and seize him. Oh, my Lord! Jesus knew he had to respond quickly with some witticism or be prematurely overcome with rapture. Uh, but the water I give shall be a fountain springing up to life everlasting. The game was interrupted as they released each other in a mutual explosion of laughter that lasted several minutes. They both laughed themselves to tears and clung to the side of the well and buried their heads between their arms. They could not look at each other without escalating the hysteria. When the laughing ended, they took deep breaths and wiped their eyes and grabbed each other's hands as dear friends for whom laughter is the most intimate moment to be shared. Grabbing her bucket of riches in one hand and Jesus' arm in the other, she led him toward the inn of Jacob's daughters. She rejoiced in her heart that the last service she would render beneath its ancient roof would be the gift of ecstasy to this wonderful man. Sir, give me this water so that I may not thirst again and need not come to draw from here. She would play the game for a few minutes or a few more minutes. Jesus was ready. <clears throat> Go call your husband and come back, he teased in a tone of chastisement. I have no husband, she lamented with maidenish pout. As they entered the couch chamber, Jesus raised his finger to heaven like an outraged father. You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, this day you've had five husbands, and then the man who is with you now is not your husband. Sir, she pushed him down at the end of her couch and kissed him firmly on the mouth. I can see you are a prophet. She sprang from the bed and stood directly in front of him. The game was nearly over. You Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. She carefully lifted her skirt and revealed her perfumed delta of tight black curls. She rubbed herself ever so slightly and undulated her prize within inches of his face. He could not take his eyes away from it. Her fragrance was blindingly intoxicating. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain. For once, Jesus had nothing more to say. Woo! Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. And uh, I will be here again tomorrow. Uh, if I'm not closed down by the, by the Board of Censors. <laughs> Continue to uh, enjoy your day. Be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. And don't forget, if you've signed up for tonight's How I Read Tarot Cards uh, Zoom lecture, it's tonight at 7 p.m. That's Pacific Time, California time. So if you've signed up for that, I'll see you tonight. Bye-bye.